I have with me uh, Dr. Richard Scott, GP. Hello, my friend Richard. How are you? All the better for being here, must say. Absolutely, yes. I see your face and my day gets brighter. It is true. Well, as, as we both say about ourselves, we've got good faces for radio. We have got very good faces for radio. Absolutely. Right. Uh, so let's have a quick summary. Last week, we were looking at fasting. Um, what is it? What's the medical good or bad of it? Should we be doing it? Should we not do it? What do we need to think if we're going to consider it? All that kind of stuff was last week. Before we get into some questions, have you got any um, uh, reflections on last week? Well, do you know something? Uh, I've known for years that I also to fast much more often than I do. And then having done this talk, I said to myself, well, you can't just preach to everybody else. You've got to apply it. And then there I was in church on Sunday, and blow me, the preacher also talked about fasting. <laughs> so, you know, if God if God isn't trying to get through to my thick skull, I don't know what he's doing. So um, I'm not going to say what I'm going to do, but I am going to fast between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. So my reflection is, I need to do it, I'm going to do it. And after doing it, we'll have a chat about it. <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. Right. I'm just setting my questions on my computer so I can see you and them. Right. Let's just rattle through these then. Uh, one person. Um, please tell Richard how much I enjoyed the episode on fasting. Really interesting. So there's a nice little comment for you. Right. I'm not sure if he covered it last week, but is fasting something you can build up two so maybe you stop by missing a meal then two meals and eventually go a whole day without eating completely correct um and some people just start bang but other people think it's much more sensible to build up a little bit like building up exercise and in a sense if you think of fasting as a form of spiritual exercise that would make sense so yes absolutely you could build it. yes little by little slow baby steps is a good thing isn't it sure uh, okay, likewise, same person. Is it something you get used to? <laughs> I can see where this is going. Is it something you get used to after you've done it a few times? Well, I'm, I'm not sure you're speaking to the right person because I'm not a great faster, but I'm going to, I'm going to improve. Um, but I, I, from what I hear from other people, absolutely that's the case, which is um, why you build it up and then you can maintain it at the level like my friend Andy C, who fasts every week for one whole day at a time. Um, so absolutely, you could, you, could, you could build that up to it and you can get used to it. Um, and then uh, another one. I've never been big on fasting in the past, but equally, most churches I've been to have never taught any practice, practicalities of it at all. As someone with a fast metabolism, is it naturally more difficult for me? I definitely get grumpy if I do not eat regularly. Is that normal? Well, there's two aspects to that question. One is you're absolutely right. And I haven't really heard any teaching on fasting. Um, I know that my daughter's church, as I mentioned last time, um, had a month of fasting. And I, as I don't go to that church, it's in the middle of the time in the South, um, I didn't hear the details. But you're quite right. I haven't really heard any proper teaching. Maybe we ought to give some. That's a, a good prompt. Um, now, that's so that's that side of the question. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch the last part. Just remind me again, Andy. Um, as someone with a fast metabolism, is it naturally more difficult for me? I definitely get grumpy if I do not eat regularly. Is that normal? Well, here's the thing. I, I know a friend who refuses to fast because he says, oh, it's, it's just very difficult for me. Now, that suggests it's more difficult for some people than others, which, to be fair, it might be. As for you know, other people, say, with a bad anger, trying to remain calm, or somebody who you know isn't very good at praying, oh, it's very hard for me. Well, I think, to be honest, I'm not someone that looks, I'm not looking forward to fasting. Um, but I think, to be honest, it's more of a decision. So if, you're, if you've got a fast metabolism, you think it's going to be particularly difficult, well, go gently. Um, but I don't see anywhere in the Bible that says only fast if you have a slow metabolism. <laughs> so, so I think we're all called to fast, but for some people it will be easier than others. But that doesn't stop anyone doing it. Um, and I think all these spiritual disciplines, whether it's reading the Bible, going to church, praying, singing, fasting, um, yeah, some people will, will be naturally better than others, but we're all called, we're all called to do them. So um, don't let that put you off. Just go gently. 
But yeah, but but do do go gently, but do go and do it. Have a go. I I actually do miss fasting. I like fasting. Um, I haven't fasted for a while because of heart issues and getting all that checked out. But it's something I enjoy. I can't say I'm good at it. That's a whole other conversation for another debate for another day. But I do enjoy the effect of having said I've had a fast and the closest that I personally feel to God as a result of fasting. Sure, sure. So you, you've got more experience than me on, on this, Andy. And I think, uh, yeah, I'd absolutely recommend and if the Bible tells us to fast. Jesus says, when you fast, not if you fast. He says, when you fast. Well, you know, that's, that's pretty clear. Um, so I don't think we should let excuses stop us. But equally, if it's not easy and it's your first time, just start gently. Yep. No, gentle's good. <laughs> okay, another one. I heard that a 30-day fast could deal with cancer, although I think it's a bit far-fetched. I wondered if there was anything to it. I've not read that one or heard it. Um, you know, we know that the benefits of fasting include reducing inflammation. I haven't heard that it specifically reduces cancer. Um, it does seem to be good for the body generally, so it might, you know, if, if one fasted regularly, it might logically Reduce your chance of getting cancer, but I certainly wouldn't use it as a, as a primary treatment for cancer. Um, I haven't read that one, to be honest, so I, I can't say definitely yes. We know that fasting is good for us, that's all I, I can say, Not, nothing specific on, on cancer. Actually, I was thinking about um, when, when you fast, there's quite a few pieces in the Bible where it's not if this is a struggle. It's like when you struggle with this, do that. When you are anxious, bring it to God. Don't be anxious, but when you are, come to me. So if we can all be anxious, we can all be fasting as well because it's the same wording, isn't it, really? Bring it, bring it to God. Absolutely. Right. OK. Uh, another one. Oh, I can't see that one. Hang on. Uh, right. Um, right. Hey. Question for Dr. Richard Scott. I have a couple of questions regarding side stitches. I seem to get them often during cardiovascular exercise. We've moved off fasting anyway. Um, I seem to get, sorry, I seem to get them often during cardiovascular exercise. And I was wondering if you have any advice on how to prevent them and also the best thing to do if and when I get one. Right. Well, usually, I mean, a stitch means there's buildup of lactic acid in, in the muscles of your side. Um, and that happens during exercise because we build up lactic acid in exercise. Now, a common way of getting that is if you eat too close to exercise. So all the blood supply goes to your stomach to digest your food. And therefore, not enough goes to the, uh, the muscles of breathing, the intercostal muscles, etc., uh, which, which then build up lactic acid and you get a stitch. Um, so you know, make sure when you exercise, the best time to exercise, I find, is at least three hours after meal. Now, don't be, you know, ravenously hungry because then you won't, you won't exercise well but you mustn't exercise too close to food because you know, that's just not fair on the body and you'll get more stitches if you get one you have to stop exercising just rub the muscles you might some people can, can find they can then exercise again straight away others you might just have to wait for a bit but i think the most important thing is prevention and from my own personal experience as someone who's keen on running i get stitches more commonly a if i exercise too close to food or b jumped it up too much without slowly progressing so and those are my those are my tips for you rub it if you get it and not and don't run too close to uh to, to food i'm sorry for the not gentle moving from fasting there i was just reading through the questions with that check <laughs> right okay another one uh i understand that lying flat on the ground aids circulation and is especially beneficial after exercise is this true if so what are the benefits now again i would dispute that one because i remember when i was uh, playing hockey for university teams we were always encouraged after after a hard run don't lie flat stand up you know you're, you're, you're trying to get some, some air in your lungs and you, and you breathe better standing up than you do lying down which is why we'll have we're in bed too long with a, with a, with a you know, recovering from an illness or an operation we try as doctors to sit them up as quickly as possible now to get people up it just gets the body going better, not least through, through you know, aerobic, trying to get air into your lungs um, more effectively. So I'm not, I'm not convinced by the lying down um, after after exercise. That's not what I'm familiar with. It's actually more a question of standing up, walk around, make sure you loosen down your muscles, which again you can't do so easily. Um, lying down because you want to train down as well as, as, as uh, you know, when you warm down with your ex with your muscles, it's much better with standing up. So I would dispute that one. 
Righty ho. Uh, and then one last one. Um, I came across a study which links drinking just two fizzy drinks a week to a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. I'm curious to know what Dr. Richard Scott thinks of this. Well, it won't be the bubbles, it'll be the sugar in the drinks. Uh, and we know that um, lots of fizzy drinks have had a terrible press um, over the last few years by having adding so much sugar into the body, you can get some of these smoothies are absolutely terrible for sugar content. Um, so I think that's where it'll come in. The, the cardiovascular disease will be, it cannot possibly be anything to do with bubbles. Uh, that's for sure. Um, but it will be to do with the content of the drink. It's too sugary. It's not good for you. And therefore it's not good for your, your heart or your blood vessels. I'm sure I remember a long time ago, somebody said, if you're drinking, for example, a bottle of Coke, it's not a drink. It's not water. Therefore, if you have a bottle of Coke, you still need to have a drink because it's just not the same as a bottle of water. It depends how, how strong the, the, the Coke is, how concentrated. So um, when, when I'm advising people in their drinking, particularly if you're trying to rehydrate yourself, say after exercise, don't just have an orange juice, um, dilute it. You need to get enough. It's all about the amount of water. Um, Coke actually isn't too bad, I find. It's, it's quite good for rehydrate. It's got lots of minerals in it. Um, but you know you need to have plenty of water as well as as well as the what you call the solute the, the, the uh, concentrate within it. So yeah, water water is the key. Um, but equally after exercise, if you've sweated a lot and got rid of sodium, potassium, then yeah, that's where your cokes and leucosades etc. Um, provide some help. But keep it diluted. Diluted. Yeah, water is good though. Just it's you know God's given us water, and water is good for the body. It's good for the soul water as adults and 90 percent as babies so you know we are literally seven tenths water hard to imagine but it's true <laughs> yeah no, that, I, that yeah that doesn't make sense in my head <laughs> but it's, it's true we are 70 percent water that's quite cool right that's all the questions we've got um so we've been looking at fasting and uh I, I do. I really do miss fasting. I think sometimes Joe and I have like, we'll have some prayer time and what fasting has done for us is it concentrates you specifically because you're, you're giving up what you want to have your, your lunch, your breakfast, whatever. And as a result of not eating, it does help you to concentrate on the prayer. So a, a few times we've had some really big decisions to make and fasting has, has factored into that. It doesn't do some sort of special magical thing, but it does help you to focus and really concentrate on the very essence of what you're trying to pray about or to focus on or consider. And uh, that's one of those where I think fasting is good, but we can fast for different reasons. But if I let's go back to last week, uh, 16 hours, that was the magic number, wasn't it? I say magic. Stroke eight. So 16 stroke eight means 16 hours without food, eight hours with food. So particularly good would be 8 p.m to 12 lunchtime the next day absolutely no 16 hours um i i miss fasting i have to be honest it's something that i miss doing it, it joe and i i, I mentioned this last week but i'll touch on it again we used to fast every week you know once or twice a week two uh, you know a two-thirds day fast so breakfast and lunch would be skipped and it was a really good discipline and the thing with discipline <laughs> is it's quite hard to do but you only really get to achieve the discipline by doing and doing and doing well, one of the things I love about the idea of fasting is it's so illogical <laughs> from a human point of view. Because from a human point of view, you think, oh, I'm not eating, I'm going to be grumpy, I'm going to be concentrated on my stomach. All the, you know, you can know all these negatives, and the devil, of course, will play into that. But what we don't realize is that you know, God's ordained it, therefore, it's a good idea. And actually, if it brings us closer to God, all of these things are just minor irritations uh, in, in contrast to the, the wonderful spiritual benefits we get. So, um, you know, whenever, you know, hopefully your listeners, and me, myself, in a few days' time, are fasting, um, don't concentrate on the bad stuff. Just ignore that. Think, wow, God is not only going to, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not only going to get close to him. The Bible says, as we re read last week, there will be benefits. God will bless us. As a result, who wouldn't want that? So let's go in with a positive frame of mind, positive mindset. Yeah, it's true though, isn't it? If we go and we are, well, I'm going to be hungry, I'm going to be fed up, I'm going to be grumpy. We're, we're building up this kind of this this wall we've got to shift through, which which we don't need just because we're going with a bad mental attitude. And although you know, positive attitude it ain't going to fix a broken leg, but it might get you to the hospital quicker. <laughs> With a nice illustration. <laughs> right, Richard, uh, have we got next week's topic sorted out? Oh, uh, um, yes, we have, and we're going to talk about the benefits of singing. Ooh. Have come up um, in in some of my reading 
Uh, and uh, so I'm thinking, well, that's not interesting. It's another example of something that we do as Christians. And, you know, we know that the Bible really can kind of sing a new song unto the Lord, all the Psalms. But now, guess what? Science is discovering it's a good thing to do. Well, there's a surprise. But actually, isn't it interesting that science just catches up down the down the road? And I'll be interested to look into, you know, interested to look into um, what the science behind the benefits from singing are. So that's where we're going. I can't imagine there's going to be downsides. Uh, if there are, because of, you know, because we're honest on this program, I'll bring them up. Um, but I'm just looking forward to seeing what the science is behind singing. Fabulous. Well, that's next week. If you've got any topical issues you've seen in the news that you would like Dr. Richard to uh, take a little bit of a look at, you can email those to us here in the studio. Hello at pure247radio.org. Hello at pure247radio.org. Any news items and any longer issue, thoughts, medical questions you've got, you can send them to us as well. As anonymous as you like, we won't read out your name where you live. That's fine. We'll keep it private. Uh, but yeah, let's know. And Richard, as ever, thank you. I really, really enjoyed the one on fasting. It really uh, captivated something inside me that I found really exciting. Well, thank you. But we don't want that just to be the sort of top of the range. It's good. But we want to keep the, the, the program uh, interesting as you know, with all the new topics as well. So I, I would just endorse what you said to, to, you know, to the listeners. Do, you know, do bring something up that you think, oh, that's really challenged me or I don't get this. And we'll have a look at the suggestions and that, that'll help us both decide yeah, yeah. where we go from here on. Because, you know, we, we, we want to. We want to scratch where people itch. Absolutely. Uh, but carefully and apply cream occasionally and get medical advice if you need to. Richard, as ever, thank you. Bless you, mate. Thanks. Pure 24-7 Radio is listener supported, which means we are free, online and always pure because of the generous support of our listeners. If you would like to contribute financially, please visit pure247radio.org. If you'd like to find out how we use your money, please visit the Our Cost section. Any donation of any size will help keep us on air and broadcasting for free. Thank you.